Yes, we are live. Here we go. Spinning the track here. Reentry Connect podcast. I'm your host, Keenan Hudson. Spin the track with my homie Bayard Thomas. For those who don't know what spinning the track is, y'all know we just spin the track and talk what's on our mind. Um, without further ado, you already know that this broadcast is being brought to you by GPS Transportation. If you're looking for a transportation company that's five star in the Philadelphia area, be sure to look up gpstransportation.net. You can contact them at 215 774 9913. Again, they do wheelchair accessibles, they do kid pickup, they do private transportation, they do party buses and all the above. So be sure to contact them when you have the chance. I'm telling you, you won't be disappointed. All you got to do is mention me, mention Kenan Hudson, Reentry Podcast, and they will guaranteed give you a special rate. If they don't give you a special rate, you contact me, and I'll make sure they give you that special rate. So, again, GPS Transportation, shout out to y'all uh, for uh, um, sponsoring and bringing this broadcast about. Appreciate that. Um, so, back to the broadcast. Bay Yacht, tell us what's on your mind, man. Let's spin, the track. spin the track a little bit, man. What's good, man? See the uh -huh. cell block all in the Let's background. Go. Let's go. See that gratis gratis for right yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's going yeah, on? So um I remember when I came to E Block in um ninety-nine, uh greatest for it. That looked like uh block my cousin Shorty was on. Yeah, you know I mean, um so, so many of the guys came through, you know. Got the door hit, you know, so they can give me some things and all that. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. It's like so many of our brothers and our sisters, you know, are behind those bars. Uh, and they haven't, you know, been blessed with this opportunity that we're relishing right now. And so many of them are deserving of such. And um, so many of them deserve... Uh, to be granted freedom, the second chance, um, to put their hand in the pot in regards to stirring up solutions other than being proud. And um, we got to do better in regards to helping them facilitate what they can um, from out here. We have so many programs, organizations, and, uh, you know, just stellar people, men and women, that's doing this work out here that we're doing to not only change the narrative, but to put our brothers and sisters in the best position possible to um, be considered to be uh, resentenced and or most importantly, released. But when you were in that yeah. box and you got, go ahead, bro. Oh, my bad. Yeah, like when you bring that up, you know, most people get the impression that somebody that's in prison is supposed to be there. Uh, somebody that's in prison, they committed a crime um, and are there because of something that they did. But little do people know that most times there's a lot of innocent people in prison. There's people in there for things they did not do. But a lot of times people overlook that because society just paints this certain picture of horror or an intimidation factor of, oh, somebody's behind prison. Oh, they belong there. But again, we speak for the voiceless. You know, we have to be a voice for the voices of those who we know that stood strong, those who we know that were imprisoned for something they did not do or in our fighting hard, you know, to come out, you know, shout out the uh, free Tyree Wallace. Uh, we was just actually at his court date where the actual judge had told the DA, Hey, look, you got 90 days to review this case, you know, and God willing that man comes home for he was innocent. But I just wanted to share light to that, that there is a lot of innocent people behind bars as well. Well, in, in, in correlation with that, I want to scream uh, free Tyreen Rivers. Um, he's one of my brothers 
uh, one of our brothers that's not innocent of the crime that he committed. Um, all he, you know, intended to do, as wrong as it was, was to snatch a, a, a lady's pocketbook. And um, the lady fell and uh, hit her head and expired. Uh, but he intended no harm to this lady. He didn't wrestle her down, knock her in the head, anything. And what he felt was one swift action. Uh, he snatched the pocketbook and ran. He never looked back. He didn't know the lady fell or anything. Um, but he's serving a life sentence for that uh, because he committed a crime. Um, and within his act of a uh, felony act, um, that's automatic life sentence. So he's scheduled to die for snatching the purse, um, which cause someone to lose their life. Uh, those are the individuals as well. Um, and then, you know, we have so many of our brothers and sisters out here free today because they were juvenile lifers, no matter what form of crime that they uh, participated in in regards to their actual charges, they're home now because the laws was changed. Mm -hmm. But we have to understand that we have that power to change these laws. Um, Senate bills comes around all the time and they're to be voted on. Um, it's on us to get these uh, elected officials um, from the small stages to the big stages to reflect our um, wants and needs. And we have to do so by exercising our might. And our might comes in with our numbers. And our numbers are dictated when we show up for these court hearings, uh, when our brothers and sisters and cousins, and uncles and fathers have hearings, um, that's why they got them seats back there to see um, whether it's the defense or the uh, prosecutor who has support, who's supporting this person in this seat, who's support, supporting these people at this bench. Who's supporting the prosecution of this case? Who's supporting the defense of this case? And um, that's why we have to show up and show out because um, lives is at jeopardy, you know, um, and we got to put forth the effort to um, save as many children as we can, to save our brothers and sisters that's in there scheduled to die in there, um, to get them out here with us so we can amplify our voices and magnifying the impact that we're going to have in our community because we're going to do it regardless. Yeah, because and a lot of times when you do look at that as well, you know, putting a lot of people away, especially for things they didn't do, it really resets them so far back in life. Um, and what I mean by setting them back is not to say that they're missing out on things out here, but they are. You know, each and every day that you spend in prison, you know, you find yourself really just like being stagnant, not advancing in any way. You may advance mentally in some cases, but you won't advance, you know, like a natural life. You know, there's so many things that you missed opportunities out on because you're in, you in prison. You were locked away. Tech, not many of us went away when technology wasn't as advanced as it is now. You know, when I went to prison, they were just coming out with a flip phone. You know, a flip phone. And I think they just got the little camera, the little digital camera on there. But then after that, I was gone. I was gone. Then, you know, then eventually, you know, they tried to bring the, um, eventually they brought the, uh, the little tablets in the prison. And then what happened was, that was like the, the most advanced technology we ever saw. But here it was, they actually bought the old tablets to the prisons. The tablets, the first tablets that ever came out, they brought those to the prisons because they was probably stacked up in the warehouse somewhere. So they sold them to us, you know, for, for arm and a leg. But long story short, but that was the only technology we had. So when we did come home, there was a lot of things that were foreign. You know what I mean? It really does set you back when you are in prison like that. Um, and a lot of people don't understand that um, 
that's a real issue. And I'm going to be talking about that. Be stay tuned, y'all, because I'm going to be talking about something called the Peter Pan syndrome that's coming in my next episode. So stay tuned. I'm going to be enlightening y'all on some real deep things. You know what I mean? So, but, it's, but it has a lot to do with uh, being incarcerated and not being able to grow beyond that. Uh, on that note, I'm going to say not being able to grow beyond when we were incarcerated. Mm-hmm. I was incarcerated when I was 18, and um, I was facing a death penalty. I did 25 years in six different penitentiaries. Uh, I don't have any children. Um, I was incarcerated, matured into the man that I am today. And I lost out on the opportunity to be a father. I lost out on the opportunity to be a stepfather to children that never had a father or lost their father. Um, And uh, I was blessed with that opportunity. And now, you know, we all have to persevere through the things that we endured while we were incarcerated. But at the same time, we got to persevere through what we are living through right now while we are out here in the free world. And um, mm-hmm. I take pride in being a conscious, liberated man. And um, I just employ more of my brothers and sisters, more of our brothers and sisters, to be more willing participants in this thing we call um, being a freedom fighter. Uh, if you was in that box and um, you know what it is to not have no light shine on your face, um, you know what it is to not have a window in your cell, to not be able to open it and feel the cool breeze uh, run down your back uh, because it was hot. Um, or not have an air conditioner, or even a fan, because I got boxed, we ain't had no fan. Um, the walls used to sweat, you know? Uh, so at the end of the day, um, it's about being more accountable with your freedom. Uh, I never came home and didn't aspire to help my brothers and sisters get home. Uh, that's why we established redemption seekers. Um, we seek to free as many brothers and sisters as we can. Um, and then most importantly, we seek to uh, stop our future, our children, from devaluing their lives and anybody else's life uh, just because. Mm-hmm. And so many of us uh, have lost our lives, took lives because, just because. Um, and that got to stop. Um, there's no justification um, when you say, uh, what happened or why did you do that? J- because, nah, it's, it's you know, um, I'm in with this, uh, how the way is cut, um, I'm standing up um, and I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you to uh, stand up. I'm challenging you to march. Um, we marching, you know, we're going to march from April to March. Um, this, this movement is not uh, for today. It's not for tomorrow. It's, um, it's for life. You know, um, I don't know how you carry it, but I carry it. I'm a lover. Um, I'm on parole for the rest of my life um, without no numbers that dictate that. But um, 47 is a long time. And um, 2047 uh, to be exact. Matter of fact, 2049, yeah, 2049, uh, you don't uh, see that as being in my life, then um, I appreciate that. Um, but, but may I real but, um, quick, and I don't mean to interrupt you, but we're going we to speak. Um, but look, we're going to speak, we're going to speak life over that, though. Like, we understand that some people are out here for, you know, parole for the rest of their lives and things like that. However, there's still ways to get around that. You know, they do have clemency out here. You know, they do have, uh, you know, you get a party in a lot of ways, even though they take some work to get, but it's still possible to get rid of that. You know, I know a lot of times we claim 
you know, that number or that mark, you know, in which the state wants us to have. But at the same time, we can still fight, you know what I'm saying, while we're free. We can still fight, you know what I'm saying, while we're able, you know what I mean? So I'm just encouraging you. I mean, yeah, it's cool to enlighten, let people know, you know, what your situation is, but we want to speak life over it. Like, yo, look, we can still fight. We can get the clemency. And if they don't want to stop there, we'll pill that, go somewhere else with it. But we're not going to allow them to claim that, hey, people going to be on parole for the rest of their lives. You understand what I'm saying? So I mean to interrupt you, though, but I just wanted to bring that, you know, to let people know, don't ever settle for less. You know what I'm saying? You you settle for what you believe in. You fight for what is right. You know what I'm saying? Salute to that. Yeah, you know I mean? No doubt. That's why I say um, good check, good check, good check, mate. Um, so in accordance with that, um, like I said, um, the redemption seekers, that's what we do in regards to seeking what's our rights. And our rights is always, um, naturally, is to be the man, the father, the leader of the household. And um, so many of these uh, rules and regulations that are placed on us as parolees, uh, uh, lucid, and then uh, relinquished. As my brother uh, cleverly uh, pointed out, the fact that what I was just saying in regards to effectuating our best interest and it's so many different ways in regards to proving that uh, these rules and regulation is hindering you and you're a law abiding citizen for X amount of months or years or decades, whatever, you can petition to the court to have such burden released from you. And what I was saying before, about us having our support system, our family, our friends, our co-workers, uh, people that we meet in the gym, uh, whoever it may be that we're engaging with on a daily basis, um, to come in these courtrooms and speak with and for us um, to get uh, individuals released from prison, to get um, clemency or uh, get a pardon, however, um, these are ways that we have to do, as um, was stated, to get freedom. You know, just because we're out here don't uh, mean we're free. And I said that in relation to um, the ability for um, any parole officer, cop, or just someone on the street that knows you. Um, it, become, it could become real, real fast. If you don't know your rights and you don't understand um, what you have the ability to do. And that's what I'm speaking about in regards to what's um, pressed upon our chest. Whether we fight it or we don't understand it or we're just at a loss to reality. No matter facts, no matter what the case may be, the fact of the matter is I, I hold on to um, what I fight. With everything I got, um, mm -hmm. that this is about life and death. You know, however way you cut it, um, at the end of the day, if you don't fight um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a fight for life and death, then um, I can't speak on that. I'm fighting, mm -hmm. and I'm not fighting for my life because my life is um, already um, what it is. Um, the love of life. I matured in evolved into the love of life. So I have no um, no fear of death. Um, I just want to give love and, lo and, and, and breathe life into the lifeless. Um, so many of our youth and our peers have no idea that they're committing suicide with the um, ways that they're providing for theirs, the ways that they're defending theirs. And um, that's what I'm breathing life to. I'm breathing life to uh, the fact that we got to care more. We got to love each other more. Um, and we got to hate less. We got to get rid of that hate. Um, that's what I'm speaking on. I'm speaking on the fact that um, right then and now, uh, somebody's child was murdered. Um, the second after that, somebody um, lost their life in prison. Mm. So that's what I'm speaking out for. That's what I'm doing this for, um, to see um, 
the day when um, a mother can hold her son and she thought she would never do so. And he was released from prison. Mm. That's why um, I stand and walk and sit here before you today um, and speak my truth. Cool, cool. Yeah, and I, um, yeah, man, I just, you know, I was thinking earlier, you know, how grateful we should be just in general to even experience freedom. Um, we always mention that some people don't get that second chance. You know, some people don't get to see that sunlight. You know, some people are just indoors, can't come out of their cell, you know, um, just wondering if they'll ever see the day of light ever again. Um, but at times, you got to remind yourself. Like, I know I remind myself a lot. Like, hey, look, that's not a place you want to go back to. So I encourage individuals that if you're throwing stones at the penitentiary, stop. If you're going around, hanging around that wrong crowd, stop. If you think carrying a gun just to flash it around and probably plot to shoot somebody, stop. You don't know what's ahead of you. Because it's either the jail or the grave. And most people that goes to jail, a lot of them repeat. They may come home, but they'd be repeated offenders. It sets you back. Before you know it, 20 years done blew by. And next thing you know, you try to figure out how to survive because you waste a lot of time of your life in and out of prison. So I definitely commend y'all to definitely reconsider the things that you're doing because it's not going to be a nice outcome when you have to spend 40 years of your life behind them bars. And then you're expecting your family to ride with you who's going to fall off within the first 10 years. So just think about it. Yeah, I mean. But uh, yeah, Big Yacht, whatever okay. you got. Let me, let me, let me piggyback on that. Um, I'm going to say in regards to, as I say, I got to figure out a new word because um, the suicide, John, it triggered me yesterday, last night, when my brother uh, misunderstood me. But um, we're going to talk about um, something like Russian roulette, right? Um, mm. You know, you, you got the Russian roulette, you put one in the uh, chamber, and you spin the barrel, you know, it's a revolver. You know, so you got a chance that it might not shoot you and kill you. You put it to your head uh, or you might get a clip, you know, and then you survive. Uh, but we talk about playing with automatic weapons as suicide. Put the drone to your head and pull the trigger. So when you know you go down this block and this block, um, you walk down that zone, you're going to die. Ain't no if, but, uh, none of that about it. You gonna die, and um, you still walk down that block. If you know you do what you gonna do, you know what you want, uh, what you holding, and you know you going to the penitentiary for the rest of your life. No if ands about it. Like that's what it is. And you willfully sign on for that life in your blood. Make it make sense. So at the end of the day, you feel as though you all this shit and all that. But um you commit an act for your man or with your man and all that. And then um your man testify on you and give you a life sentence. Uh you did something for your man, you pushed him for your man, and um he out on the streets. And three years after you was incarcerated, he um he having a baby with your baby mom. Mm. Um, there's so many things that I can say that uh, we've experienced, and trust me, believe me, we've experienced so many different things in regards to that life deceiving us. 
that life violating us, the people that we stood for so strong with, um, they folded. And we was the only ones with that bag in our hand in that cell. Sit. Mm. Um, you may think, like I did, that that wouldn't happen to me. Um, my peoples love me. My peoples this and my peoples that. Yeah, my people love me. But they was living their life. And um, you'll be stuck in that joint with life. And you won't get the opportunities that we was willing to die for. And um, mm. that was to come home and be a, bar, be a part of something that was bigger than us. We're not here um, speaking and presenting ourselves in this forum um, for our individual selves. Um, mm. Every time we speak, we got people with us. You know, I, I got people with me. Bro got people with him. And then all of us, all of them got people with them. So why we yeah. can't stand up and um, hey, uh, make an impact? Real quick, it's a it's a um there's some people over here on Instagram, right? Um somebody by the name of Sean Alliance. Um he was asking where we're from. We're actually from originally from Philadelphia, but Bayox over in Harrisburg, but we're in Pennsylvania. Um, so then he was saying, like, facts a lot of things you were saying. He also says that he says, I was robbed the other day. He said, I don't blame the kids, I blame the New York hip hop industry. Wow, that's deep. He said he blames the New wow. York hip hop industry. Is is his name is uh showing alliance. Like that's deep because you know he's listening to everything you're saying right now. Yeah, I respect that. Um, big props, Sean. Um, I'm gonna say this right, um, and this is just uh, my walk right now and my march, and um, I'm saying that because uh, we have a march coming up in Harrisburg. I'm not gonna speak too much about it because it's not what we're here for right now, but. What I'm going to speak about is not hip hop. It's not um, New York hip hop. It's us as individuals. Because I was one of the counterproductive elements in my community. Um, I had individuals that was with me and that followed me, that was under me, that aspired to be like me. That they heard and seen the things that I was doing when I was pushing 10. And um, they believed in that. Um, so it comes and starts with us, whether it was our elders or our youngins. At the end of the day, this is the work that we put in. So now we got to put this work in to combat that work because we got a false sense of reality, thinking that we got to do that type of stuff to live a uh, meaningful life. So we robbing ourselves like you was robbed. Yeah. Like you was robbed. That young, that young boy that's out there that he don't know his dad and his mom didn't hide and he got a little brother in the house and, and, and he trying to provide and ain't nobody putting nothing in his hands so he can make life, you know, meaningful. Yeah. That's yeah. who Paul it is. And that's what it is. And that's what it, and that's what it is. Like he said, even the hip-hop scene, man, it's a lot in the music in which... Um, controls a lot of the young people today. If you rap about positivity, young cats don't want to hear that. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, they they value the, oh, shoot the ops up. They value, hey, pick that gun up and knock them down. You know, they value, yo, in any means necessary, you kill your enemies. Like, they value those type of things, which is not good. And that's why, you know, we're killing ourselves, especially a lot of Black African American men. A lot of people don't understand that in the United States, black people make up only twelve percent of the country. A lot of people don't understand that. So, if you're killing each other off, just imagine what you're doing to your people. There'd be no more people, no more mm -hmm. black, you know. And we just think it's okay to do when we just sit here killing each other. 
Not saying that I'm 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 you know I'm I'm promoting oh kill other people. No, shouldn't kill nobody. Shouldn't want to take anybody's life. You didn't even give a life, so what makes you think you could take one? But in our ignorance, you know, and the experiences that we had, we didn't know what we were doing. We were kids. We were, you know, adolescents. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to convey that message early so you guys don't fall down the same rabbit hole that we did. Um, so, but Big Out, I, I know it's coming up on time, though. Uh, we want to definitely, because I'm quite sure you're going to be going live right after this, you know, to burn it down more. Um, so... If y'all can tune in definitely to Bayak Thomas, E Bayak Thomas, you're gonna be going live, right? Bayak, eight o'clock, yeah, yeah, he's gonna be going live. So, y'all, yeah, eight tune o'clock, in eight o'clock. what he doing? So, eight o'clock, E Bayak Thomas, E dot B A Y A H T H O M A S, um, yes. many platforms. We're going to do it on Facebook Live, though. Okay. Cool, cool. Well, without further ado, man, it's your host, Kenan Hudson, here at the Reentry Connect Podcast. Appreciate everybody tuning in, spending the track with E. Bay Thomas. We appreciate everybody coming through. Again, shout out to GPS Transportation, uh, dot net. Um, Y'all can contact them, 215 774 9913. Be sure if you guys are looking, coming in, flying in from um, on the airport, if you need a party bus, um, it's a lot of different things that you can get from this transportation company. Feel free to contact them, mention my name, or mention even um, the podcast, and uh, they'll definitely take care of you. But uh, until next time, we're going to see all you guys, all everybody later, and uh, everybody have a good evening, good day, and uh, we'll see y'all soon. Peace. <laughs>